Hey, this is Redman coming to you live from Vulcan Gas Company here in Austin, Texas for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony! It's back! You guys waiting for the best goddamn night of your lives or what, huh? But a hand for the great Brian Red Band. Hey, everybody. everybody. Ah, you guys with us? Welcome to Kill Tony, brought to you by the Red Rose and the Yellow Rose, and delicious Deep Betty Vodka, all amazing local Austin, Texas treats. Great sponsors of the show. How about a hand for the band, huh? Did you guys hear that? That's the official Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey Kill Tony band. That's the great D Madness on the bass guitar right there. That is Dave Scher on that electric guitar, Max Frost on this one over here, and that's the great Michael Gonzalez on the drums. Oh, and hey, look, it's Paul Deemer on the horns, everybody. We got all these Austin icons here for one amazing show. I'm so pumped about it. A lot of great stuff happening, a lot of fun stuff planned for the night. It is indeed a very special episode. You'll find out why in just a moment. But before we start, here's a little bit more from the amazing sponsors that made tonight's episode available for you here right now. Hey, y'all. You might not know this, but when I'm not being the host of the number one live podcast in the world, what I've been doing for the last 16 years is being a professional stand-up comedian. And I'm excited to say that I'm back out on tour again. October 11th and 12th, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. October 14th and 15th, I am in Boston, Massachusetts. November 4th and 5th, New York, New York. December 9th and 10th, I'll be performing in Arlington, Texas. January 13th and 14th of 2023, I'm in Dallas, Texas. And February 9th and 10th of 2023, I'm in Houston, Texas. Tickets available at TonyHinchcliffe.com. All these shows sell out, so don't be a doofus. Go to the website now. Get tickets while you still can. Hey, y'all! It's time to gear up for fall with Bespoke Post and their new seasonal lineup of must-have Box of Awesome collections. Bespoke Post partners with small businesses and emerging brands to bring you the most unique goods every month. We are huge fans of Box of Awesome. I've gotten a lot of my favorite stuff. I got the Carnivore, the American barbecue rub, and the Carnivore box is made by the Great American Spice Company in Rockford, Michigan. They're all made by cool, local, real companies. You know, good American small business. The stuff that makes the red, white, and blue go round. The best country on planet Earth. And here we are, coming into the fall season. So I have some hunting knives, some really cool uh, I have some travel equipment that I use, some unbelievable bags that I've gotten from Bespoke Post that I'm about to take to Boston, to Philly, to Vegas, all this week. And a good, durable bag, let me tell you, when you're on the road a lot, goes a long way. Box of Awesome stuff actually is awesome. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you because each one is different and personalized. As you guys know, Red Band and I, literally two totally different people, and he gets stuff designated for him, right, Red Band? Of course. I, I get all the stuff for the kitchen, including Scorch. It's a bunch of hot sauces in there from small brands all over the country, with some from Texas, Nevada, California, and more. And they release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. Each box is valued at around $70, but you only pay a fraction of that price. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel any time. It's like Christmas every single month except stuff that you actually like, not another pair of socks from your dead grandmother. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code KILLTONY at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code KILLTONY, all one word for 20% off your first box. Boxofawesome.com, code KILLTONY. You guys ready to start tonight's show or what? I mean, I, I got you. I know we're starting on time. Maybe you didn't get enough drinks in your system, but we've been having a lot more fun than the energy that I'm feeling from you right now. Are you guys ready to start tonight's fucking show? There we go. One of the amazing things about this show is people always go, What's a, what about the bucket? What about the this? You get to find talent. Well, one of the things that happens here is on top of watching the growth of regulars on the show and having 
big, crazy, special guests all the time is sometimes on this panel, you get to see the future. Sometimes we, you know, I like, I take great pride in the fact that five or six years ago, I was saying, this guy's the future, ladies and gentlemen, Tim Dillon, or three years ago, this guy's the future, Shane Gillis. We've always done that. This week is no different. Three guests for you, three of the longest standing regulars in the history of the show. Tonight's guests are William Montgomery, Hans Kim, and David Lucas. Wow. Oh, shit. Wow. Amazing. William Montgomery. David Lucas. And Hans Kim. Scoot your chair all the way over. Wow. There they are. Un. Unbelievable. Tonight is indeed a special night, comedian appreciation night, we are calling it. We are going to get at least three more bucket pulls out tonight. We're going to meet a bunch of the... How do you comedians feel about a bunch of extra bucket pulls? They're all in the back smushed together right now. They're thrilled. They can't, they can't really make any noise because their chests are compressed against one another. It's like it being in an Indonesian soccer game back there right now, but... <laughs> But here they are, three of the best. You watched them go from, uh, from uh, wanting to be part of the big game to headlining all around the world. Uh, David Lucas traveling continuously. Couldn't make it to my gigs this weekend in Nashville because you were headlining. Where were you at? Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, headlining his own shows. Hans Kim was on a jet to Atlanta with Joe Rogan. And William Montgomery was on a jet to Nashville with me. My boys are all grown up. For those of you that are fans of the show, not many comedians get to travel by jet. Ha 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 ha. Unfucking believable. How was your weekend, Hans? It was amazing, Tony. Uh, you weren't there to make fun of me, but uh, Joe Rogan picked up the slack. I bet he did. There's a lot of slack to be picked up on, a lot of extra material, some of which you've cut off that shirt. Uh, <laughs> tonight. I love it. I always love it when you dress like a Thanksgiving turkey to be here. Uh, Pumpkin spice. Very fun. William Montgomery who took his first jet ride like a nervous Nelly this, uh, this weekend in Nashville, Tennessee. Got to go home and do amazing shows at your home club, Nashville Zanies, with special guest poppins by Theo Vaughn. And your parents were in-house, the people that made you. Your father put his penis in your mom. Yeah, I was, having, I was having a wonderful time at all the shows until Saturday hit when my parents were there. And then Tony starts graphically explaining them fucking how they yeah. made me. <laughs> it was horrifying. I was horrified. I was, I, was <laughs> about, I was talking about how his father put his penis inside of his mother's wet, warm vagina and moved it back and forth repeatedly until you did that on stage yeah 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 and i looked i was looking at his parents right in the eyes while i was doing it i had dinner with them before i'm allowed to do shit like that they were laughing the crowd was laughing the only person not laughing pussy yeah i wasn't pants laughing. over here all right well. <sighs> william montgomery and of course the great david lucas the roast meister himself i get to watch you uh, yeah. let it rip on some of these fucking Oh yeah, innocent victims here tonight. <laughs> We're gonna have fun. I you guys wait. ready to start tonight's show, huh? A lot of you guys know how it works. We have a bucket filled with comedians' names. If I pull their name out, they get sixty seconds uninterrupted. You know their time is up when you hear the sound of a kitty. That means they have to wrap it up then, or else they bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. Which sounds like that. And then I interview them afterwards. We find out more about them. We talk to them about their lives and what makes them interesting. The whole thing's improvised. We all figure it out together. You guys ready to start tonight's show? <laughs> to the bucket we go. Normally we would start with the great Hans Kim. He would build momentum, build comedy momentum, show you how it's done. Tonight we might just start fucking drowning right from the get. I mean, it could be an insane person. It could be a local legend ready to break out. You guys ready for this shit? Your first comedian goes by the name of, well, we know this guy. Make some noise for Matthew Maloney, everybody. We know Matthew very well. He's been on the show in Los Angeles. He's been on the show in Austin. 
He's a real comedian, a good kid. Good way to start tonight's show. We got lucky on this one. Make some fucking noise, 60 seconds. Uninterrupted from Matthew Maloney. Half lemonade, half iced tea. What's that called? Arnold Palmer. Palmer. You're goddamn right. So why the fuck is Chick-fil-A trying to call it a sun joy? I go through a Chick-fil-A. I'm trying to cut back on sodas. I order an Arnold Palmer, and this bitch corrects me. Oh, would you like a sun joy? No. What fucking hippie shit is a sun joy? Sounds like the Kool-Aid that the cult leader passes out at the last meeting. (laughs) But I tried it. I tried the sun joy. And it was fucking perfect. (laughs) Best Arnold Palmer I'd had in my life. (sighs) And that's why they'll get away with it. That's why Chick-fil-A gets away with everything. Thank you guys so much. All right, Matthew Maloney, 60 seconds, all on Chick-fil-A. Do you do Chick-fil-A material because you're their mascot? (laughs) You're the eat more chicken cow? Spell it out for some of you that didn't react properly to that unbelievable joke that I just made. I know it's early, but it's happening now, folks. That was amazing, because you look like a cow. (laughs) A really, really smart cow, though, you do look like. Thank you, Tony. Very intelligent man. Um, so welcome to the show, Matthew. Remind us all, how long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Um, not counting, uh, eight years, let's say eight, eight years. Eight years is a good answer. And what do you do for a living? Um, I just got a new job, actually. I am a after-school teacher. Yeah. Oh, pedophile. Very good. All right. Come on over to my place when you're done with school. After-school teacher. So what exactly are you doing? Um, so, for all those parents that don't have time to pick up their kids when school ends, they enlist their kids in a program where they deal with me for three extra hours. And Holy shit, dude. Yeah. So you pick them up from school? No, no, I go to the school. I have to show them an ID and pass a background check. And, uh, right. Every day. <laughs> every day is a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then you go to the school and hang out with them at the school. Yes. Okay. Very good. And how long have you been doing that for? Like fourth week. Fourth into... week. Yeah, so yeah. how's it going? Tell us about it. How are the kids nowadays? Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> I mean, I have a background. Like, I, I used to teach kids. Not like... only you have a background, but your front is also round. I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> I, thought that, I thought that was better than what that got, too. This seems like a light. I noticed it from the gate. You guys are light, light energy tonight. Is everything okay? Front round? Front round because he's fat again, folks? All right, let's just keep... Thank you, sir. Thank you in the back. All right. Uh, go ahead. I interrupted you. Uh, so a long fucking time ago, I was a camp counselor for like eight... Uh, eight consecutive summers at a Boy Scout camp. Absolutely. So you have heavy experience in pedophilia. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it from both ends, yeah. Some of the good old Pornhub pedophile movies that we're used to. Okay, Boy Scouts, and uh, what, so, did you, what, did you, what would you guys do in the Boy Scouts? Go steal the Girl Scouts cookies from them? and uh, <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, I guess we're just going to start slow today. <laughs> I taught basket weaving in the Boy Scouts. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. All Seriously? Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Among other things, but basically they, they kept me with basket weaving. They knew I was kind of only good in the one area. Okay. All right. Tell us something interesting about your life that we don't know about since the last time you were on this show. You know how being a... You've been uh, on this show a few times, back in L.A. multiple times, here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so right before... Um, the school thing I was um, uh, like a sorry I was working at a boutique hotel on 6th street uh, and I got fired uh, because I asked for a raise 
because I caught my boss cheating. Whoa. You asked for a raise. So you, okay, so let's, Which was a stupid idea. Right. Like, it was the worst idea ever because even if she went for it, then she has to like work with the guy who's blackmailing her. It was Oh my god. I didn't think it through at all. Yeah, you really didn't. So it's a she. I think that's a twist that we did not see coming. Yeah, yeah, Tell yeah. us more about this. So you're going through a room or something like that is is she in one of the <laughs> hotel rooms? She often uh, would like meet guys in the empty hotel rooms, yeah. Like a valet guy or what what who did you catch uh, her with? You know, honestly like um <sighs> I like I caught her like kind of sneaking off with some of the more handsome guests like uh you know like like nothing I can confirm until like my friend who got me the job uh-huh. told me like like he put in his 2 weeks and then she like jumped on him because he knew, like she, she had a crush on him for a while and then he was on his way out so he's like okay I better fucking ride him and then fucking I'm off oh shit incredible so were they hooking up at the hotel or other places uh, my friend hooked up with her in the in the bar bathroom. Wow, classy God lady! Damn, get a room at the Holiday Inn. You know what I'm saying? It would you would. It's surprising that they would do that because you literally should get a room at a hotel. <laughs> Uh, so you said she cheated, so you're saying she was married? She was married, yeah. or oh. she is married, yeah. yeah. Yeah, still married. Do you think about? Calling the husband or anything creepy like After that? After I got fired, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. But you didn't. I don't have his number. You don't have his number. I, I, I met him. I had met him once before, but I met him quite a few times after I found out she was cheating. And it was always like, like I had this like awkward energy inside me of wanting to tell him, like, dude, you're fucking, uh, I don't know, but I didn't. Holy shit. Ever think shit. of like Facebook or something? You could send him a little message? Uh, man, I... <sighs> I just don't. I, yeah, I. I, <laughs> I mean, you just gotta do it for oh, the bro. For a while, for a while, I like try to like. I knew his like full name, so I try to like uh, stalker him like uh, like on the internet. He's but pretending I, I, like he I, doesn't I, 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 know how to be a stalker right now. This is very exciting. <laughs> I failed at stalking. Wow, that uh, is so interesting. So <laughs> interesting, guys. What do you think about Matthew Maloney? What do you? What do you, is your first time seeing him? No, I'm not asking you. You fucking <laughs> idiots. What a dumb audience this is tonight. It's unbelievable. Don't know when to laugh. Don't know when to clap. I'm asking the guests what they think about Matthew Maloney. This isn't fucking America's Got Talent where your vote matters at all. (laughs) Morons. Text the number. Jesus Christ. A lot of people visiting from Houston tonight, huh? Is that what's going on? It's a little bit of a sluggish crowd. Hans Kim, let's start with you. What do you got for Matthew Maloney? Anything? Have you uh, thought about sleeping with the husband to get back at your boss? That's a good question. That's a good fucking question. Not my type. <laughs> ah, right. Too old. Uh, I don't <laughs> oh, know. He's, he's one of those guys with, with real nice guy energy, and she's fucking hot, so I kind of understand it. Yeah, it, yeah. it was definitely a he got her pregnant sort of situation that they're in right now. Right. But, um, you know, I don't know. I babysat her kids. It was rough to find out. <laughs> okay. All right. David Lucas, this is the vanilla version of you. What do you got for this guy? No way. He has zero swag. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what's that white shit on your shoes, bro? You been oh battering chicken God, or what? Dude. That was this fucking dust from the goddamn kids today. We did, we did a fucking experiment with fucking mud, and mud's not white. That is not mud. No, no, but when it dries, it is. That's motherfucking excessive powdered donut flakes, <laughs> <laughs> cookie crumbs. You don't fuck with Skechers? Hell no. I've never met a black guy who does. Bro, I... I love the pitch that David Lucas just got to. Hell no! The nicest thing I heard a black guy say about Skechers was, man, they look comfortable. <laughs> yeah, they do. You, they you do. don't get no pussy in them shoes, bro. <laughs> uh, I don't. What is your love life like, Matthew? When's the last time you got hooked up Dude, with... Uh, three years ago. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been a while, man. It's been a while. You yeah. on any of the dating apps? Like, yeah. Um, pl- I went... Plentyofwhales.com or something? <laughs> Oh, that's the one. Oh, you guys like fat jokes. Okay. Now you do. All right. 
William Montgomery, what do you think about Matthew Maloney? I remember like four years ago, we got drunk as shit at some show outside of Los Angeles one time. That's do you remember right. that? Yes, sir. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. Why'd you just say? Uh, why'd you just say yes, sir? Because I respect you. Well, thank you a lot. Because I swear to God, if you didn't just fucking yes, sir, me, I was about to fucking lose it up here. <laughs> I swear to God, ever since fucking Tony started saying the sex stuff, and my sweet parents were in the fucking room, it's like a screw was fucking knocked loose. So I'm glad you just said yes, sir. Thank you. William is a wildfire here tonight. He does have a gun and a rope on him. I got one reason. on me right now. Oh, boy. He's wild. Matthew, thank you for getting tonight's show started. You showed everybody how it's done. Matthew E. Maloney, everybody. All right, back to the bucket we go. Anything can happen here. Hell yeah. Good looking crowd we have here tonight. Your next comedian goes by the name of Justin O'Donnell, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Justin O'Donnell. Here he comes. It's all happening. Come on, one more time for Justin, everybody. So I had a, I had a threesome the other day, and I wanted to say something sexy, but instead I said... Oh, I wish I had two dicks right now. <laughs> so, uh, Daredevil's a cool superhero. He's kind of funny, though, right? Because it's like, oh, we got a blind superhero. It's like, awesome. What's his, uh, what's his superpower? Well, you can see. <laughs> you can just kind of see. I got in a heated argument with the trans man the other day, and I was like, fuck you, bitch. But I mean bitch like the way I would call another man a bitch, you know? I would, I would never call a woman a bitch. Uh, I watched the movie Casino the other day, but I saw it on uh, cable. So you know how they censor things for cable? You know, they change the words to other words. So in the censor for cable version of Casino, uh, Joe Pesci's character calls Robert De Niro's character a Jew motherfucker you. But in the censor for cable version, he calls him a Jew money lover you, which is way worse. It's so much worse. Thank you. Wow. I like that. Save the big one for the end there. Smart. Smart, smart man you are. Justin, have you been on this show before? Yes, sir. Ski. Okay. I'm glad that you're back. Yeah. What happened last time you were on? Uh, I thought my minute was okay, and uh, my interview was dog dick. Why do you think your interview was dog dick last time? Uh, so First of all, can I tell you that I like that you have the mic stand taller than you right now? <laughs> I was watching you hold it through your set. You look like Mexican Gandalf or something <laughs> like that. Just incredible. He's a little guy, right? Yeah. I Gandalf love it. was a hobbit, yeah. You say that you had a threesome. I bet the two girls you were with say they had a two and a half sum. <laughs> this guy. I've actually, Tony, I've actually never had a threesome, but I came very close one time. I love it. Very close. I love it. How, how, why, what ruined it at the end? Uh, Did you try any of your jokes on him or something? <laughs> Uh, I, uh, I, they were both on the floor, which is wet, which is another what? story. <laughs> no! Uh, no, that's not another story. <laughs> All right. That's this story. We have to find out right now. <laughs> A couple ladies slipped and yeah. fell and so, then couldn't move, and that's your almost threesome. <laughs> I've fallen and I can't get up, yep. but I can get up. I can get up right now. <laughs> Uh, so they're, they're my two friends, they're strippers, and, uh... Oh, they, okay. They came over to my apartment to, like, they were... Is that why you always hold on to a pole like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reminds me of better times, yes. <laughs> uh, so... So your two stripper friends are on a wet floor. Explain yeah. how they get there. So they were doing, like, they were getting drunk, they were drinking my beer, and they were, like, doing, I think, ballet you in my living room. You say they were drinking your beer like you didn't want them to be drinking your beer. <laughs> They were drinking beer is what a good house right. uh, a host would say. They were, but you yeah. said they were drinking my beer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm just bitter overall from this story. Right. But, uh, so they were doing ballet in my living room, and one of ballet. them... Ballet. Ballet. No. Strippers randomly doing ballet in your living room? Well, yeah, is you, cocaine involved? Your jacket, your jacket tells me that there was coke involved. <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. There you go. That's one one for me. Cross that yeah. off your Kill Tony bingo card. <laughs> uh, one of them stepped in my dog's water bowl and spilled water all over the place. Oh, shit. She ended up on the floor. The other, the other one, like, joined her on the floor. They started, like, you know, feeling on each other. Oh. They started trying to pull me down. Oh, shit. But I didn't want to get on the floor because it was wet and gross. And, and what like, the I had a bed. fuck? <laughs> I'm sorry, um, ladies, I would, uh, <laughs> but it's it's so it's so wet and gross down there. They're I'm, like, come on, Justin, you're so close to the floor, just come a little. <laughs> you're right here, Justin. Just bend over. I can't imagine yeah. what kind what kind of strippers on blow. <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't fentanyl? Uh, Hey, I don't have the testing strips. Anything's possible. All right. I bet. I bet. So go ahead. Tell us more. We're getting halfway. David, you got something on this guy? I just wanted to say, you're a bitch like the kind I call the man, <laughs> not like how I call a woman. <laughs> uh, I, I just realized that I always need David on panel. Like, I need you just to sometimes call people a bitch like that, because when I do it, I'm kind of a bitch, so it doesn't really come across. Some people would say uh, I almost slept and fell into some pussy, but instead slept and fell into a pussy, right? <laughs> oh, my God. This is Kill Tony. Now we're cooking. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Ah. Slept yeah, uh, and fell into what? <laughs> okay, so then what happens? Uh, yeah, I fell and <laughs> smashed my knee on the floor. Wait, you really did? Yeah. With them already on the ground? Yeah. So then you fell too? Yeah. What kind of fucking Three Stooges ass shit is going on at this place? It was pretty embarrassing. By the time I felt up for it, like the sun had come up, they had to go home to their kids and shit. <laughs> <laughs> strippers? <laughs> You've heard of comedians in cars drinking coffee. I, nothing better than strippers doing ballet while the sun comes up. <laughs> Slipping on dog bowls. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Justin, what do you do for work? Uh, I am a bartender. Oh, wow. Can you yes. see over the bar that you tend? <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> what do you want? You just see a bottle with a hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh... <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> hey, do the voice one more time. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> I thought you set a low bar with your comedy, but I mean, wow, bartender, absolutely incredible. I, I actually bartend at another comedy club. Can I say the name, or is that a... No. <laughs> right. I don't see why you would. <laughs> no, fair enough. I don't see why you would. Do you do comedy there? Uh, they haven't started running open mics yet, so ah, not yet. Ah, I see. It must be quite the prolific comedy club we're talking about here. <laughs> All right, Justin. Well, anything else for Justin, guys? What do you guys say? Anything else for this little thing? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just so disappointed in me. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get him off the stage. Yeah, All right. Somebody get him off the stage. Hans, kick him in the ass. Somebody get him off the stage. Kick him in Before the ass. Before you go, no, Justin, I... I'm going to give you one of these small joke books, but for you, it's a normal-sized joke book. All right? There you go. Justin O'Donnell, everybody. Oh, shit. We got a Karen going to the restroom, everybody. <laughs> All right. Your next comedian goes by only one word. The name is Crum. C-R-U-M. I'm positive it's the first time on the show. I would remember a name like that. Here he comes. Make some noise for Crum, everybody. Hello, hi. Um, yeah, it's an unusual sound. Um, hi, <laughs> my name's Crum. Uh, Crum's actually my last name. I come from a really long line of crumbs that lead all the way to Hansel and Gretel's house. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, um, I grew up a Jehovah Witness, which is, is kind of like being a door-to-door -door salesman 
except, you know, you're selling lies. And um, <laughs> I spent a lot of mornings on doorsteps where a lot of people, especially men, come to the door naked. So as a child, I saw a lot of grown men's penises. <laughs> Obviously not as much as my Catholic friends, but, you know, <laughs> still quite a lot. I'm actually envious of my Catholic friends, though, because growing up, Jehovah Witness, you don't get any birthdays, Christmas or Easter. So although I wasn't touched, it kind of feels like somebody fucked my childhood. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. that's me. Thank you. Crom. Oh, my goodness. I don't know where to begin with you. Wow, Crum, welcome, welcome, welcome. So where are you from? I'm, I'm from New Zealand. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. Just an interesting crossover then. That's interesting. That's where Lord of the Rings was filmed. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was, in, um, I was in Rings of Power, actually. You were in it? Yeah. I, wow. I play um, Ontimo, if anybody watches it. Wow, I was expecting a big pop there. <laughs> Any Ultimo <laughs> fans out there? It's a, anybody? Yeah, anybody? It's a anybody? Anybody? <laughs> you know what? Actually, <laughs> I was expecting more. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love it. Okay. So you really were in that? Yeah. 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 I'm, I am. Yeah. Is I that the it. new one out now on Amazon? That it everyone, is. Yeah. That everyone criticizes deeply? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have yeah. you read any of the reviews on that? I uh, would not look at the, uh, those. Uh, <laughs> My self-esteem is already too low, so... I love it. Yeah. I love it, Crumb. So is that what you do for a living? Are you an actor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's How long have you been doing that for? Um, well... Sorry, Tony. That's New Zealand for, I'm thinking. Um, uh, I, I did it since I was 18, but, like, made money. This is probably the only thing that I've made money from. Made money. I made money. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. How long you been in America? Uh, uh, like a week and a half. Okay. I what came here to see what Austin comedy is like. All right. How's, this how's it been going for you? Um, people think I'm British. Uh, right. And yeah, it's, it's awesome. I saw some amazing... Like I was here at the Thursday show and I was like, fuck, there's some good comedians here. Yeah. So yeah. You're goddamn motherfucking right there is. Uh, so... Crumb, you act, you've been doing stand-up for how long? Um, like two and a half years. Two and a half years. So do you make all your money from acting? Um, uh, no, I also uh, work at a comedy store in New Zealand um, on the lights and sound. It's called the Comedy Store? Uh, it's called uh, <laughs> the Classic Comedy Bar. Classic Comedy Bar. <laughs> Classic Comedy Bar. Wow, look at you. Look at you. I am. Um, <laughs> you know what? Some, to... Somebody get this guy a fucking green card right now. <laughs> I've I had to, like um... it. I like that hard R. You know what I mean? I've had to. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to learn it because every time I fly United and I'm ordering like a Coke, I'm like, "Can I get a Coke, please?" And they're like, "What the fuck? What?" And I go, "Can I get a Coke, please?" And they're like, "Oh yeah, Coke, of course, yeah." It sounded the same that one. <laughs> Well, fuck. <laughs> you just added please to it. That's really <laughs> it. Can I, I get a Coke? <laughs> I don't know. All right. Crumb. It works. All right. Hans Kim, what do you think about this? I don't, I don't know you could order a cocaine in a United flight. <laughs> wow. Hans Kim, that was worse than his. <laughs> 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 wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hans Kim. Hans Kim. I thought that. Hansel and Gretel joke was going to be the worst of the night until, <laughs> you until I let Hans oh, jump in. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Hans, give me your Rolex right now. I'm taking it. No, I'm kidding. Uh, what do you do for fun, Crumb? Um, I sing. Uh, Shut the fuck up. What the fuck do you sing? Uh, I don't know. Frank Sinatra? Really? Mm -hmm. Sing us some Frank Sinatra right now. What? What? what which Frank Sinatra song? <laughs> Uh, Name a song. Fly me to the moon. You guys got this? A, a one, a two, a one, two, three, four. Me. Oh, that was your cue. Stars, let them see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words, darling, kiss me. Fill my heart with 
song. All right, I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you right there. That was great. That was great. That was great. Yeah. I noticed that when you sing, you sing American as well. Yeah, otherwise they can't understand me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you, maybe you should talk like Frank Sinatra then. Maybe that should be your voice. I, don't, I have no idea what he sounds like in a normal speaking voice. Okay. Sing some R. Kelly. Sing yeah. some R. Kelly. Yeah. You want to impress me, sing some R. Kelly. I have no idea what you're saying. I'm so sorry. <laughs> What the fuck did he just say, David? What the fuck did that piece of shit just say, David? Seriously, I don't know if I heard that correctly. What'd you you just fucking say? Bounce, 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 bounce. Here you go. Once I get you out the club, private... Just make it the kitchen. Am I speaking it right? Am I saying it right? Yeah, you Give me that two, two. Give me that beep, beep. Give me that. Run it, huh? Do I piss on them now? Bounce it on Twitter. All right, all right, all right, all right. Very good. Okay. I don't. It was okay. It was. Sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've, distru- I've disrespected your uh, culture. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm gone in a week. I'm, I'm David so liked it. You said hot and fresh out the kitchen. I saw him get hard as a rock <laughs> over here. <laughs> yeah. Stupid. Or Crumb. fresh, fresh Cr- out the closet for you. <laughs> <laughs> Crumb. Give Tell- me that boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that pee pee. <laughs> We got it. <laughs> Crumb, before I let you go, because you're so interesting, you're from the other fucking side of planet Earth, tell me one more crazy thing about you or your life. One interesting thing that, that makes you think that you're different than everybody else. Maybe it's something embarrassing. Maybe it's something cool. Um, I can put both my legs over my head. Get the fuck out of here. This guy's a gem. This is a godsend. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! I think that I think that makes me gayer than you, Tony. But I don't know what's harder, <laughs> that or me. That's incredible, Crumb. <laughs> Thank you, so Crumb. Much. You came all the way from the other side of the world. I would like to present to you a large kill Tony joke book. Very, very entertaining. That's the type of magic that happens. He came all the way from New Zealand to Austin, Texas to see what comedy is like here. And look at that. Pulled out of a bucket. Let's keep the fun train moving along. Tony, I thought you was going to give him a golden ticket (laughs) for putting his legs behind his head. (laughs) Oh, my God. This guy's got to go jerk off real quick. Look at this guy. Your next comedian goes by the name of Thomas Leon, everybody. Here we go. We're rolling along smoothly tonight with three of the regulars. They're all on tour, Hans Kim, David Lucas, and William Montgomery. This is the Kill Tony debut of Thomas Leon. That last guy was great. I wanted to have sex with him. Uh, I am a, sorry, I am a uh, sex addict, anyone else? Are you guys Christians? Make some noise for Jesus. And that makes a noise for sex. That's what I thought. What? It's a Jew back there. Uh, I, I read recently on Instagram, I'm gonna drop this. I read recently on Instagram that uh, sexual energy is healing energy. And I was like, thank God. <laughs> I didn't give you herpes, I taught you boundaries. You guys don't have herpes? <laughs> you are dizzy, aren't you? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm uh, adopted. Uh, that probably explains some things. I, I was adopted. And being adopted is a lot like getting picked for PE in middle school. Like you're just standing there, like, being like I hope I'm next. Oh, uh, the crippled kid's going? Okay. Oh, that's my time already? All right, I'm done. I'm Thomas. Thank you. All right, very sad ending there, Thomas Leon. 
Is that my I'm time? happy about it. I'm happy. Okay. All right, Thomas. Um, welcome to the show. This is your first time on. I'd yeah. remember if I saw the top half of a centaur on this show before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. Very, very interesting set. How long have you been a cult leader for? Uh, I'm actually taking applications out back, so... Uh, <laughs> I bet. Yeah. Mostly out back is what I'm guessing, indeed. Oh, I'm straight. Out I'm back and straight. in back, Thomas. Where are you from? Uh, I, well, I came up in Nashville. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. And uh, now you live here? I don't. I'm from here, actually. I grew up here, moved to Nashville, started comedy, and I'm back because my grandpa died. Okay. Yeah. When, when did your grandpa die? <laughs> About a week ago. Grandpa died. Yeah. About a week ago. <laughs> About, <laughs> About a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it, but I'm Oh, laughing. man, it's I wish rap. Red Band knew real <laughs> rap references. It would, take a, it would take them six minutes to find that on Spotify. It's oh. called Hot Nigga by Bobby Shmurda. Yeah, Bobby Shmurda's Hold in prison. Up. I do believe the U is an asterisk in Shmurda, by the way. Something like that. Okay, uh, Thomas Leon, let's talk about it. How did your grandpa die? He was just old. He was diabetic and uh, like kept eating sugar. Should've. Oh, wow. Yeah. Jesus. All right. Should have tried having sex with him. Uh, <laughs> he kept saying what? no. <laughs> Hans Kim, what designer drug did you take before coming on the show tonight? He said... Are sec- you on Molly right now? He said sex is healing energy. He should have healed his grandpa. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> I um, love this. Thomas Leon. Yeah. With the haircut of a girl making the walk of shame. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see that? It's he looked like Kenny G. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. You look like That's Ken- hack at this point. Kenny G A Y. That's not hack. You see that? I'll yeah, add a that little add that. a little fucking juice that. to that. Someone that said I look like a gay Tarzan the other day. I was like, yeah, yeah that that's sense. true. Yeah. If you swang from dick to dick. <laughs> See what I mean? You gotta add stuff. It's yeah, the magic. Yeah. It's all about what words you say. Yeah. So, uh, you were adopted. Yeah. Is a note that I took during your set. What age did you get adopted at? I was uh, 13. So I Whoa! Started... Yeah. That's pretty fucking deep. I mean, five more years, you're an adult. I, I know, yeah. So, how was that? Were you in foster care until uh, 13? No, my stepdad was just like, we're done, and. <laughs> So I just started living with He broke family. up with you? Yeah. <laughs> Your stepdad? Yeah, I saw my bags on the street, and I was like, all right, this is the end of... Wow, what happened there? What did you do? Did you misbehave? Uh, yeah, I was a bad, bad boy, too. Really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. He was just a bad dude, and I, like, I realized that if I, like, ran outside while he was trying to hit us, that, like, I was safe. And, oh, uh, he would hit you? Oh, that's yeah. sad. Did he pull your hair a lot? <laughs> <laughs> Only it, it, if I was good. <laughs> oh, okay. Very good. I see what you did there. Look at the, <laughs> the crows. We all never had stepdads? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, what do you do for work? I just do programming stuff. It's really awful. I just I make money doing software stuff. Okay. Yeah, I'm did trying you... to do comedy like full-time, though. I like that. How's that going for you? It's hard. Comedy? Yeah. Oh, good. I I, uh, I have a video uh, gear, so I'm like recording for a guy, and so he takes me on the road. Okay. And so I'm getting in front of people, and uh, that's way better than an open mic. You're goddamn right. Yeah. yeah. It's important to do both, though. It's important to see where you stand, but it's all good. Yeah, I I'm banned it. from like half the mics in Nashville. Why would you be banned from half the mics in Nashville? I was Nashville? in a fist fight with a uh, faggot. Can I say that? No. <laughs> <laughs> No. I get it. He's not gay. He's not you gay. You can't. Okay. I can. Yeah. <laughs> you faggot. <laughs> but you can't. I can and you can't. That's how this show goes. I'm down for that. That's cool. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm problematic. Apparently. Was he actually gay or you just... No, he just, right. like, he's like tried to cancel me. He like told me I was a bad person and told no one to book me and then uh, at a mic. And so the next mic, I like just hit him. Wow. Did you sucker punch him or did you... No, no, no. There was dialogue and then the fight. What was the last thing you said before you punched him? Take that. <laughs> wow. I'm just kidding. I didn't say wow, that. Wow. I, I didn't realize you were in a Batman comic book from the 80s. Kapow! Pow! I'm kidding. I didn't. I don't know. I said, stop fucking with me. And he said, no one likes you. And that's my trigger word. So. Oh, like, yeah. No one likes you. You're like, yeah. fuck you, yeah, stepdad. Yeah. <laughs> 
He's like, the guy's like, he punched me, and then he said, I'm never coming home again. <laughs> wow. Yeah, something like that. Thomas, yeah. what's your love life actually like? I believe that you're a sex addict. Do you give off the vibes uh, of a no, sex addict? No, I don't addict? give the vibes off because I'm, like, I'm not good at closing, so it's like if there's a connection, I'm always like, I'm going to go now. Right. Uh, but I am. I need. I need love, Tony. I need to feel connection. Right. Yeah. Okay. So tell us Shut about. Up. Tell us I about the like last that. time. Shut when up. was the last time you had sex with somebody? Uh, I got my dick sucked about a week ago. <laughs> about about a week ago. And you got it loaded. I was like my grandpa. Oh, dead. Bobby uh, Schmerda. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's not gonna. No, no. Orphan music isn't gonna save you on this one. <laughs> Look up on this one. Look up Bobby uh, Schmerda. It'll be worth it. Trust me. You're gonna. In fact, this should be a thing that you have in the, uh, in the. Uh, no, not about a week ago. Look up Bobby. S <laughs> H. No, there it is. There it is. Yep, that's it right there. Okay. Now you're gonna have to go to like I think like 47 seconds or something. <laughs> No, no, it's too soon. <laughs> Look for it during the thing. <laughs> uh, David knows. All right, so um, what were we saying? Oh, it was about a week ago. So you find out your grandfather dies and you just rape somebody immediately, right? No, no, I mean, she, she wanted it more than I did. I knew it was bad. Where'd you meet this girl at? I don't want to say. <laughs> no, that's why this is a comedy <laughs> yeah. show. That's why I'm a sex addict, Tony. <laughs> All right. Very good. So you were staying at a boutique hotel around the corner here somewhere? <laughs> no, 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 no. There's a, there's a lady that runs a, uh, a float tank in Nashville. She Get the fuck it. out I'm of serious. here, dude. dude. Honestly, I can, I've done a float tank like four times. Every time I can do the full hour... I got my dick sucked this one time, and I was like, five minutes. I was like, I feel terrible. I have to get out of this place. I just felt guilty. I felt You're really hooking guilty. up with girls in the float no, tank? No, I don't. Not multiple. Just the lady that works there. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, Thomas, very interesting. I, it's not good, Tony. I'm looking over. Red Band is looking up the lyrics for the song. <laughs> Hot N word by Bobby Schmurda here. We I don't even see it. Made it through. Yeah. Where's it at? Uh, yeah. I, I guess it really doesn't say it in the actual Oh there it is. Well, no. No, no that's not it either. And that's why I didn't pull it up. <laughs> huh? Shut the fuck up. You're not These fine. guys suck. Yeah, I know. What you wanna come down here and get beat up by a gay guy? Yeah. <laughs> I will fuck you up. Take that. Yeah. yeah. Here it comes. <laughs> I'm going to punch you now. Is it okay if I hit you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thomas, uh, welcome to the show. Thank Congratulations. You. Sorry about your grandpa, a but tiny? you got on a big... Uh, uh, come on, a tiny. What? I'll take it, whatever. You don't think it... You should I thought I'd Yeah, what okay. the fuck? Okay. Am Hell I wrong w- about this? No, no you're no. not. Right, I'll take a tiny. Give me a tiny. Give me a tiny. I'll take it. There it is. Thomas Leon, everybody. I was going to give him a big joke book there for a second, but then I called his stepdad. He said, give him the small one. All right, back to the bucket we go. You guys having fun yet? Wow. All right, everything stop. Stop for a second. This is an emergency situation. I was going to give this guy a spot no matter what, yet the bucket of destiny uh, has, um, has played its hand once again. This guy was on this show for his very first time ever last week, and he did the absolute unthinkable. Remind you that we've done this live show in front of a live audience hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times and are coming up on our 10-year anniversary. Meanwhile, nobody ever, ever in the history of the show has had an unbelievably killer set and a killer interview without ever saying a word. (laughs) Zero words were said in the 60-second set. One word was said in the interview. I do believe it was good or something like that. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for an instant Kill Tony legend. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the second set ever by Michael Malamud.
Holy shit. Let's do words this time. I'm for real, dude. I got a, um, I had two gay dreams about, uh, I'm straight as an olive branch, but I had two gay dreams about, uh, they were both about, <laughs> they were both about um, my best friend. <laughs> that guy's the coolest. <laughs> Who else? Who else would I uh, choose to experiment with in my dreams? I'm just, I'm not even going to look at them until the fucking thing, you know? This is, uh, I just got to wait it out, man. It's coming. Oh, it is coming. There it is, Michael Malamud with his second set ever. Very interesting. Words this time, I wasn't expecting that. If you, I have to be honest with you. I thought you were just going to ride the wave and see how long it could go. Honestly, better without words. <laughs> better without? I don't think you need them. If, if I was going to give any advice, I would say work out that thing. And I even noticed when you hit some quiet pauses, like the laughter started and you sort of jumped on it, with this whole I want to do jokes like everybody else thing that you did tonight. You're fucking right, man. You're I really think right. you play a different instrument, though. I think your specialty is silence. You're right. It's unbelievable, the strength of your silence. Like right now, the way you're looking at me is hilarious. It's unbelievable. Everybody agrees. I don't even have to do jokes. All I have to say is that's funny. Because it is. Why do you think your silence is so powerful and funny? Cultivation, dude. <laughs> All right, cultivation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, practice. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, now, Michael, we're talking now. Tell us more about you, anything about you. Where are you from? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. How long have you been in Austin? Uh, two years. Okay. But before that, I lived here for three years. I was doing comedy here for three years. You started here? Basically. Okay. Yeah. So you started here, and then you moved to Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and you did it there for no, how? No, no, no. Uh, I'm from Brooklyn. I moved around a lot. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah that's what salamanders do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So where else did you live? Chicago. Okay. What'd you do in Chicago? Just had a girlfriend. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was she real? Dude, you know, I'm actually not entirely sure. <laughs> yeah. what, do you, what do you do for a living, Michael? What does a guy that looks like you do for a living exactly, other than work at a head shop or grow marijuana? I actually, talk to me after the show, y'all. I actually uh, <laughs> did, uh, d I lost my main job like a couple weeks ago. Wow. I was uh, answering phones for a plumbing company. For a plumbing company? Yep. Wow. Yep. Okay. Very, you know, robotic customer You seem service. like you'd be good at that. You know what? Let's give it a little test. I'm going to be a customer. I'm going to call you over at the phone company, and let's mm -hmm. see how this goes, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for calling plumbing and air conditioning. This is Michael. How can I help you? Uh, hey, Michael. Uh, I can't believe that the place is called plumbing and air conditioning. Uh... <laughs> Seems pretty basic and generic, but I'm guessing this is a real business. I have a real plumbing problem. Um, uh, I well, I'm so sorry to hear that, but thank you so much for calling in. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I have a real problem. My, uh, my pipes are all clogged, if you know what I mean, Michael. And I need someone to come out here and unclog my pipes. <laughs> Hey, red band. <laughs> Get the fart board out of there. That's enough. It's not my butt. <laughs> Clogged with what? Sounds he terrible. <laughs> it is terrible. Everything's backed up. 
I can't figure out what to do. I need help. Can you help me? I'm sure we can help you with that. Okay. And where do you live? I don't know if I feel safe giving you my address right away. You haven't asked me any questions about the problem or anything like that. Okay. And the, pla- and the name of this place is plumbing and air conditioning? And the first thing you do is ask for my address? I'm so sorry, sir. All right. I live at 44 San Jacinto. 44 San Jacinto. Uh, and is that in the zip code 77778? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It actually is. You must have a uh, Google or something over there. We sure do, sir. We have a uh, GPS location. Okay. Services. All right. So what about these pipes, dude? Oh, I wouldn't know anything about pipes, but I'd be happy to have a uh, licensed service technician over to your home. I love it. Thank you. Let's do it. Come over. Let's fuck. All right. There you go. I hang up the phone. That's it. All right. So, Michael, let's talk about it here because we found out that you had a girlfriend at one point. What, what's someone like you? What's like a romantic thing that you do when you're in a relationship with a girl? I'm interested to know. Oh, man. You ever put, like, rose petals on? No, I'm amazing. I'll, yeah. like... I'm an amazing boyfriend. <laughs> no, I am. I am. Women don't deserve me. I, uh... No, I'm serious. Um, I will, like, take inside jokes that they like and make a custom shirt <laughs> out of it, you know? Aww. Yeah. That actually oh, yeah. is kind of cute. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they love it. Like, what's an inside joke shirt that you've made before? Oh, man. Okay. Oh, you do this a lot. This is... No, no, no. This is going to be super uh, painful for them. This is bad. It's good. Uh, but, you know, so you we got, would... You about to say the N-word right now? What's going on? No, no. I save that for open mics. I um, was talking... We, we used to go on dates together like you do Um, and you know she used to say that I was part of the clean plate club right when we when I would finish everything on you would always you always finish your plate oh unreal that's something I I I already knew that about you actually I have you pegged I have the word tapeworm written here right next to your name Yeah. yeah got it and anyway, I just made her a shirt saying that she was the president of the CCP, the Clean Play Club. CPP, yeah. CPC. Okay. The Clean Play Club, that would be CPC. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Mm-hmm. Actually, I'm wearing a shirt from her mom. She's my ex now, though. Okay. Yeah. That's sort of sad that you're still wearing stuff that her mom got you. Yeah, same last week. I don't buy clothes. Why did you guys break up? Uh... Just like a mutual, you know, regular regular breakup. Let me ask you this. Does the carpet match the drapes? I'd imagine your penis is completely covered by pubic hair. Dude. Below and above, just pubes everywhere and a very, very tiny penis in the middle of it. Uh, Am I close to right on this? You're, this is the you're only, right. This is the only show anywhere where you find out what the person's penis looks like. <laughs> You're right. It uh, just tons of pubes, right? Oh yeah. Because yeah. why would you trim down there if the top looks like that, right? Very predictable, yeah. Absolutely, Correct. no Correct. doubt about it. Even D Madness knows you have a ton of pubic hair. <laughs> dude, uh, Duda, 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 dude. Uh, last week, um, in the middle of all that uh-huh. that was happening, yeah. Uh, I hope it got in the cut, but uh, D Madness yelled something like, I don't even know what's happening. Because I was just silent. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Sorry about that, man. Don't worry about it, actually. You should have done that again. I try to be. (laughs) It was impossible to do what you did last week this week. Let there be no question. You made the right move. But what I love about what we've learned about you this week is that you can take jokes really well like that, the way you roll with it, smile with it, laugh, 
It's. I think you're. A, I think you're built for stand-up comedy, Michael Malaba. Let there be no question. Thank Please. You. Uh, what's, that? what's the longest set you've ever done? Like twelve. Twelve minutes. Red band. Uh, would you like to open up the secret show Thursday? Whoa! Look at that. You already got one of these, right? Yep. Yep. There he goes, Michael Malamud, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. On to the next one we go. Back to the bucket. You guys want to pick one? You want to pick one? Hans Kim, digging into the bucket. We got Brian Swinehart. Oh, Brian Swinehart. I know this guy. I actually started stand-up comedy with him 16 years ago. 15 years and 10 months ago. Here he is, Brian Swinehart, everybody. One more time, make some noise for my friend, Brian Swinehart. Hey. Hey, man. Well, man, I'm happy that the world's back and we're all together enjoying laughs and living our lives. Um, During the pandemic, um, did any of you guys follow the CDC guidelines? Fuck no, did you? No. CDC stands for Communist Dickhead Cocksuckers. <laughs> and I didn't take the vaccine. Not because I think my body's a temple and I'm afraid to put anything in it. In my life, I've done alcohol, weed, coke, speed, acid, DMT, ecstasy, mushrooms, ayahuasca, and a fat chick named Stephanie. <laughs> That was an addicting drug. (laughs) Hard to kick that habit out of bed. (laughs) But I trust all of those drug dealers more than Fauci. (laughs) Fuck Fauci. Fauci, stone cold pathological liar. First he came on television, told us, oh, you'll be safe, no mask. Two weeks later, mask, you're dead. Virus comes out, you say, hey, two masks, right? Fauci was lying to us so much and people were obeying so much. Fauci could have come on there and lied about anything and people would have done it. Fau- keep going, keep going. I want to hear Fa- the end Fauci of it. could, this is my last one, sorry. Yeah. Fauci could have come on and said, take your finger, shove it up your ass, hold it there three seconds, rotate it, pull it out, put it in your mouth. If you can't smell or taste it, you got COVID. Hell yeah. You got it. One minute, 35 seconds of Brian Swinehart. We gave him a little extension since I've known you you for a while there. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate it. Brian Swinehart. Now, this is very interesting because, again, another history in the making. This is the first time I've ever pulled anybody out of the bucket that I started stand-up comedy with. You and I used to wait in lines at fucking smoothie joints and during the daytime in Los Angeles to go perform on a stage basically barely basically in front of each other. There was like 15 of us that there was nobody in the audience. We couldn't sell a ticket. Nobody knew who any of us were. It's still the same story for you. I still can't sell tickets. That's right. That's why I'm here tonight. But yeah, I'm not going to deny that. I mean, a lot of people like Fauci, I guess. I don't know. That's right. Nobody likes that cocksucker. Fuck Fauci. That's okay. All right. (laughs) Somebody got triple vaccinated over here. You know what I mean? (laughs) Somebody's got a dick that doesn't work anymore. Look at this. I didn't get no vax, Tony. I didn't get no vax. Very good. About that. Very good. I like that you didn't get vaccinated. I like that for you, Brian. No. I think it's. Yeah. (laughs) How did you know at the time not to trust that guy? I know why I had my initial thing. Well, I'm. Because I have AIDS. And uh, (laughs) no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I don't have AIDS. Just a feeling, man. I know it's a believable (laughs) joke. (laughs) Barely anybody (laughs) laughed at that because they're like, oh, he does. Okay, Okay. I thought so. All right. (laughs) It's just (laughs) HIV right now. That's true. I'm actually not, I don't have HIV, but I am in the Clean Plate Club. I am the (laughs) CPC. CPC, yeah. (laughs) Not to be confused with the CDC, which you did jokes about. When you first said that, I'm like, what was he in the Clean Date Club? (laughs) All right. So, Swinehart, yeah, it's buddy. been years. Uh, tell us what you've been up to in life. Tell us about your story. Where do you think you and I went different directions? <laughs> well, I mean... Because <clears throat> it is interesting, right? Yeah. We were in the same place. Well, you know, everything. I've been just going along. I, um, you know, there for a while I was working a lot as a stand-in. 
on sets and stuff, and that started taking me in a different route. You, you were know? a stand-in. Who mm-hmm. were you a stand-in for? Any big celebrities? I did it for McConaughey. Whoa! Mm-hmm. So I, you're his height and, like, width. He's a lot more buff than I am. Oh, okay. okay. But, um, and All then right. on Fast Furious 7 after... I was his stand-in in Dallas Buyers Club. Oh, I, I believe that. I believe that. <laughs> See that? That's comedy right there. It's an instant callback. AIDS, back, boom. Not like the other guy. It's like, I'm going to punch you. <laughs> You never see it coming. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I love it. Uh, Fast and Furious 7. After Whoa. Pa- Pat Paul Walker passed the dead for his brothers. Oh, shit. Yeah, so, wait, yeah, wait oh, slow down. You, yeah, that's depressing. So wait a second. So Paul Walker dies, his brothers stand in, and you're the they stand in for, for the them. stand in. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah, man. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. William famously hates Paul Walker. Oh, yeah. I know that bit. Oh, please, not now. Paul <laughs> Walker, more like Paul Crasher. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I respect you a lot less after knowing you oh. stood in for that fucking piece of shit. God! I should have brought that up. I forgot yeah, about that. Yeah, you shouldn't name. have. Paul Walker, a big trigger word for uh, for yeah, Don't bring him up again. <laughs> what else have you been up to, Brian? Where do you live? Well, I'm in Ohio right now after the shit got fucking crazy with uh, fucking stupid-ass Gavin Newsom. Yep. Uh, took everybody's freedom. I say, fuck it, man. I'm going back home to Ohio. I mean, it kind of sucked. Grinding out all those years, going for a goal. You ain't but lying. I'm like, dude, no mask. Even where I live in Ohio, no stupid bullshit. LA, I'm walking down my dog down the street. People are yelling at me, yelling, put on your mask. You know, yep. I'm like, no, fuck it. I'm out of here. My dog's like, let's go. <laughs> you know, I let's love get that. out of here. You have a talking dog. There you yeah, go. exactly. <laughs> well, I've done some drugs. So, yeah, he talks. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Swineheart. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. And tell us more about your uh, your own life. Like, what do you like to do for fun? What are some hobbies or something like that? Well, this is a little crazy, but I'm 43 years old and I still wrestle. Once, <laughs> yeah, once a year I do a wrestling tournament. Wow. Yeah, and uh, I started. Uh, I I started after I hadn't wrestled for 20 years, and then I came back in uh, tw- uh, 2019. I hurt my fingers, boat accident, lost my fingertips. Oh shit! Yeah. Oh oh, disgusting. Yeah, I know. I know. Oh. <laughs> 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 so wait, so wait a second. Hold on, because this is gold. Uh, so wait, you're what on a boat next to a boat? What's going on? No, here? I'm on a boat. How rope. does this happen? Okay, I'm on a boat. Rope gets loose, comes flying back at me. I go to grab the rope. Fingers get stuck between rope. And psh, yeah, hilarious, right? Oh my God! So your fingertips on your middle finger and your ring finger are gone. Wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah, Look dude. at that. Little yeah. finger over yeah. there. Do you get a discount on gloves? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. What, did Hans write that for you? He just texted it to me. He Thanks, Hans. To you. Thanks a lot. I knew it wasn't going to work. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, so you man. lost your fingers in a boating accident. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you this. Where's the boat? Like, how far from the hospital are you? You're just gushing oh, blood. Oh, man. We were far, dude. It yeah. felt like we were far. I kind of fainted a little bit, came back. You <laughs> right. know, it was, oh, it was crazy. Oh, fuck. Yeah, man. Oh, so, my God. Yeah, so my coach, my uh, my wrestling coach from back in high school, I called him. I was all kind of being a little bitch about it. And he yeah. said, you got to start wrestling again. So I started wrestling again okay. because of that. And I don't know if you know this. David Lucas, state qualifying wrestler. Oh, no shit. Tony Hinchcliffe, Youngstown, Ohio wrestler. Yeah. Ohio, yeah, where wrestling is a really big deal. Yep. And uh, fun fact for those of you that don't know, David Lucas once decided to talk shit for many weeks in a row about <laughs> out of nowhere for no reason. He's just <laughs> sitting there being a good boy in the green room, and he keeps on Tony, if we wrestled, I'd beat the shit out of you. And I kept <laughs> saying, no, you wouldn't. And he's like, I'm a state qualifier from Georgia. And I go, yeah, but Georgia and Ohio are two right. different levels That's completely. He's like, motherfucker, I have a 200-pound weight advantage on you. <laughs> and then Joe Rogan go- I was fine. Everything was fine. And then Joe Rogan goes, Tony, you're fucking crazy. David Lucas would smash you in wrestling. I go... Let's fucking go right fucking now. <laughs> and a fun fact, after a stand-up show, after everybody had left with only the staff here at Vulcan to witness it, on this very stage, I fucking beat the shit out of David Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's embar- go, go. It was embarrassing. 
It no. was embarrassing. The whole story. The only thing I could have done to have Rogan respect me more, I did. <laughs> The you know, whole Tony. story started off upstairs. Tony said, I'm a better athlete than you. I said, nigga, I'm just fat. You're not a better athlete than me. <laughs> so first of all, we started with a push-up competition upstairs. And then I, I was... I won dr- that too. No, I don't think... We both did, I think, 15. Well, I know. That wasn't the max. I did, you, did, you did 14. And just to show you that I could do more, I did 15. Yeah, something Because like you that. also said you could do more push-ups than me, which is fucking crazy. <laughs> And then we were drinking all night. This is like 1.30 in the morning. And And we had gourmet dumplings from Lynn, one of the best restaurants in town. So my blood pressure was high. I had all that sodium in my body. My blood pressure was high. And I swear to God, I swear to God I ate more dumplings than you did that (laughs) night. People wouldn't believe, but I got that Michael Malamud fucking clean plate committee. (laughs) I don't. I don't. I. I know he said he won. Rogan said he won. I don't really remember. But all I do know, <laughs> I is beat the shit out of you. All, all I know, he is tried some, to lay on top of me at one point, and I slowly wiggled <laughs> out. All, all I know is somebody said they went into the green room thirty minutes later, and Tony was still recovering. <laughs> Dude, I swear to God, the ca- you, you are right. The catch with that was is I got all the way home, uh, showered, laid down in bed. And still, my heart was like, dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it, That shit was impossible. I almost threw up right over there. At you know, Tony, I actually snuck in and I filmed that whole thing if you want to put no, it right. No, you did not. He does. He has a video <laughs> from up on the balcony. I've seen it For before. Real? But it doesn't really. I want to see it. It doesn't really tell the story. Uh, oh, it tells the story of me beating your ass. Let's see it. Uh, let's wait, see it. you think the video <laughs> makes no, it look no, like right you here, want? Right here. All right, let's watch the video right now. Put on a projector. <laughs> So I'm glad you brought up wrestling, Swinehart. Yeah, that was great. David and I had a battle of the titans. <laughs> we're gonna do a real one. We're gonna. Ro- yeah, that's what Ro- we're gonna Rogan's do. got a. Yeah, Rogan's got mats yeah. in the gym, and we're gonna fucking film it and do it for real because I was wearing cowboy boots, so I had to take them off. So not only did I beat him in wrestling, I beat him in wrestling with socks on, which when you're going up against a 200 pound weight advantage is fucking impossible. <laughs> and I still did it. Your leader, Tony. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, haters in the balcony. <laughs> you should have known better, David. Tony's been wrestling with his sexuality for years. There you go. Oh. Hans Kim. Hans Kim. <laughs> Hans, you waited till now to do a joke like that? I love it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, how about one more time? I've known him Thanks, 15 Tony. years. He had the courage imagine. to sign up. He came up. He did the damn thing. Take I'm one. Give you something. Take one of these, Brian. I'm gonna give you something. What's that? You need a beer koozie. It says "Fuck Bill Gates." Thank you so much. You're welcome, Even man. trade. Yeah. Fuck Bill Gates. I love it. I love it. At some point. At some point over the years, <laughs> Brian became like a fucking. Uh, what do they call those people? Oh, a prepper. <laughs> fuck Fauci, fuck Bill Gates. You guys still having fun out there, huh? <laughs> All right. This doesn't look like a real thing, but I'm going to try it anyway. Uh, make some noise for cell phone, everybody. Let's see what happens here. It's got to be real. We got people checking this shit now. Cell phone. This should be wild, ladies and gentlemen. Make some noise for cell phone, everybody. Kill Tony! (laughs) Motherfucking kill Tony. Thank you all so much for... This is amazing. Look at me. Woo. (laughs) Didn't think I'd make it. Um, I kind of look like a cholo that got kidnapped and had to fuck my way out of a clown car. 
but it was actually a trans am. And now trans I am. <laughs> um, I celebrate Pride Month, you know? And uh, I'm a trans femme of color, and I wouldn't be here had it not been for the work of Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. Of course, what I'm most proud of is my lack of gag reflex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so on a trip to Cuba um, a Russian man told me that I look like I had no childhood visible um, <laughs> this is coming from a guy who survived the collapse of the USSR he looked at me and he said this bitch has it worse than fucking Chernobyl <laughs> thank you thank you thank you cheers cheers, cheers y'all. cell phone cheers, cheers, y'all. am I saying that right Cell phone? Oh, yeah, yeah, cell phone. Wow, it must not be getting any service right now, huh? (laughs) Struggling up here. (laughs) Woo! Cell phone. Oh, my goodness gracious, cell phone. You look like everything. I know. (laughs) It's a joke I've never had to gotten a chance to make before. You look like fucking everything, everything to everything. Uh, It's true. I'm, I'm... You would think that I'm like the wor- the epitome of everything that goes against this this fine establishment. I'm a, a vegan, right? A trans, right? A they them, a what? A they themer. Okay, <laughs> all right. And what, uh, what do you think about Fauci? Uh, <laughs> hell yeah! I I I would prove to him I have no gag reflex. Wow, one in the Fauci, two in the Alchi. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Wow. Now, is this true about the gag reflex thing, that you're being honest? Zero gag reflex? No, not with the microphone. Yoni, do we have anything that we could test this out on? You got like any, a banana uh, or something? Do we have a banana? No, no. No, we're not going to use the gun, we, you homo. Jesus, this guy is the gun. Let's get him on stage. No, we can't use a glass bottle, right? What do we got? We got anything behind the bar? Hans, pull your pants down. <laughs> no, I, I, none of us have a gag reflex for Hans's dick. <laughs> that is not how you measure for a gag reflex. Wow, can take a full quarter of an inch. Now, is that glass? I don't think we should do glass. If, if she I, I fucking... I could do it, I could do it, I could do it. No way. Is a Red Bull can better? If this glass breaks in your throat, we, we have no Golden Pony Productions Death Squad LLC. We claim no, you understand yeah, that you cannot. Good, this is literally a tragic accident. Wait, what the fuck is that? This is what I trained on, actually. Oh my God. Oh, Wait, that's, is that this is the greatest cord? podcast on planet Earth. Is this there is a camera? Like, ladies and gentlemen, cell phone, everybody. Wow. Oh my god. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. Oh, I'll sign it. Stop, stop. Stop. There's people throwing up in the audience right now. This is Woo. Oh, I feel like I'm in L.A. all over again. This is incredible. <laughs> Holy shit, cell phone. You are the real fucking deal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I feel like you're probably a mix of everything that we've already seen tonight. You probably uh, also got adopted at the age of 13. You uh, hate Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clean plate club for sure, I got you. Yeah, yeah. sure. Sex addict, check. Check your and, grinder. And, and my guess is you've probably had an accident where you lost your fingertips at some point as well. <laughs> Just kidding. So cell phone, let's talk about it. Uh, tell us about your life, because we, we want to know for sure. Um, let's see, let's see. Where I does am, it all begin? Uh, Born in? I came out of my mom's vagina in L.A. Wow. I had you as a coming out of your father's penis for a second there. (laughs) Born in L.A. 
Um, I have been in the Bay Area for 13 years, and I am traveling North America right now on a vegan pop-up tour. A vegan pop-up tour. Wow, yeah, this sounds... Pops. So how does a vegan pop-up tour work? What is that? Uh, I am so... Um, like, I set up food around all over, so... Mm, yeah. Food. Okay. So you, right. like, make food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, what kind of food are we talking about? Vegan for sure, but like, well, what's your specialty? Well, uh, I have made my own cheeses. Uh, I started looking at vegan cheese company in <laughs> that Portland. That sounds delicious right, right now. I'm sure everybody would love to try your gag cheese. <laughs> the special fermenting process, you know, and yeah. you, need, you need a lot of skills. I um, love it. So, yeah, uh, I also do, like, you know, like, Mexican kind of food. Right. Okay. Yeah. Fucking awesome. And uh, what else? What do you do for a living? You do that? So that's, what I, that's what I'm doing right now. I used to own a bunch of different, like, I had a food truck and a couple, a restaurant, and that closed, and I opened this another an, restaurant. It, I just got to say, it's incredible. You seem like you would be here to protest the show. Right, yeah. No, I love you so much. I love, Tony Hinchcliffe is, like, the shit. I love, look, look. Thank you. He supports comedians. That's right. He supports... He supports gingers. He supports black people. That's true. Supports Asian people Thank the you. most. I, I even support whatever the fuck exactly, you are. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much. Cho- Tony Hinchcliffe is the best trans man that has ever existed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Honorary trans man. Na 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 trans man. I love it. My pussy is so wet right now. <laughs> So, cell phone. Um, very, very interesting. You still talk with your parents? I talk with my mom, yeah. Okay, all right. Um, but yeah, to, my therapist actually told me that I grew up in a love-deprived household. Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, so that's, you know. That makes I, sense. You know, look at me. I'm trying to get as much love as I can, obviously. So yeah. uh, that's why I changed my name to the thing you love the most and can't live without. Cell phone. <laughs> Very, very interesting. Now, you really changed your name to that full time. Uh, that's just the name I, yeah, I, I've changed my name in okay. the past. But yeah, that's just the name I okay. currently go by. Now, yeah. let's take an adventure here and talk about your, because I do it with everybody. Let's talk about your sex life for a second, okay. Selma. Because I can't even picture what it would take to make someone like you satisfied in the bedroom. <laughs> Can you describe to us what you're into? Uh, mostly... William Montgomery's parents. Yeah. Oh! I, I imagine them mostly. So you like real wholesome people. Yeah, just. And you yeah. just want to come in and wreck their lives. That's why I'm here. I love it. So you mostly. William, first of all, what do you think about cell phone wanting to fuck your parents? I'm actually into that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Seriously, I'm not even going to lie. Ever since you told that fucking story on Saturday, I was honestly a little turned on yeah. when you were. But no, I mean, if we really could make this work out, would you really be down? Would you yeah, really? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Let's, let's do it on live right now, whenever. Uh, okay. <laughs> we're, we're, we're in the process. We have sent the jet to Memphis, Tennessee. We are picking up the Montgomery's. Join back in two hours. Okay. So you really like like wholesome adults? Uh, I could sort of see how that makes sense. I I, I like a, you know like into whomever, but I usually date like femme people. And femme like, people. Yeah. And describe to us what that means. I'm from. I've lived in Texas now two <laughs> years. I don't even know exactly. Uh, femme people is feminine. You know, like, yeah, like the opposite of masculine. You know. But like, but it's men. Feminine men. No, just people with. Whatever genitalia. Anything feminine. But who's fem, yeah. Okay. Okay. That too, there you yeah. Go. Yeah, <laughs> one billy goat in the back. The pussies! <laughs> the fuck you talking about? What do you mean? Pussies are not pussies. <laughs> fucking idiots here. <laughs> fucking this guy made the long drive from Bastrop to be here tonight. <laughs> what do you mean, pussies? Jesus Christ, sir. My God. It's the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott's here, everybody. (laughs) Sitting in the back of the room. All right, so cell phone, I just can't get enough of this. I mean, tell us something else. Like, what are some hobbies of yours? What do you do for fun? Uh, You're so much more interesting than these boring straight people. (laughs) Right? Um, 
I like uh, like voice work. Uh, you do I impressions? Like, um, I just I like just to come up with like new voices. Okay. And, uh, what else other than voice work? Uh, I could do. Um, let's see. Uh, do like vegan. what do you do for fun? Other than the vegan pop ups, there must be something. Roller derby. No. <laughs> <laughs> no it's I, I yeah roller skating at skate parks. Yeah, I'm usually like the only manager at Trader Joe's. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> <laughs> only the vegan section, you guys. Oh, Trader Jane's. So, did you start the vegan food work after you got fired from Netflix for protesting Dave Chappelle? <laughs> Dave Chappelle's a big hero. Yeah, he's oh, awesome. Okay. <laughs> he's a good guy. I got one more I question. I love your fucking attitude. I don't understand. I guess what I really want to talk about is like that, is that why do you think it is that so many people um, like you don't like Chappelle, don't like shows like this, don't like dirty things and people saying, well, you know, like crazy stuff and joking about anything and everything? Why do you think that is? You hang out obviously with these types of people all the time. You're vegan, you're they, them, you're this, you're that, you're everything. Right, right. Uh, I don't know. Some people just can't take a joke. I don't know. I feel like if you if you want to be whoever you are, you gotta let other people be whoever the fuck they want. Yeah. You know, so. I love it. So, I don't know. Cell phone... <laughs> cell phone. It's weird calling you cell phone. The weirdest thing is calling you cell phone. Because now I feel like that's your name. It's just casual. Like, cell phone, I gotta tell you. <laughs> but I absolutely love that you signed up for this show, that you came up here with an open mind and an open coming. dialogue and an amazing interview. So intriguing. I love your attitude. Sign up again Woo. anytime Thank you want. Thank you, Austin. Appreciate y'all. Yeah. Cell phone, cell phone. Catch this. <laughs> yeah, David Lucas is going to pick out of the bucket. He, we might have time for one more. Should we do one more? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to try to pick a girl. I'm good at that. going to try to pick a girl. If it's a guy, pick another one and say sorry first name. Sorry. Uh, Nikolai, sorry. Sorry to Nikolai. Sorry, Matt. Yeah, try, try to grab a bunch. He's already out of breath from is picking that, names. Is that a girl? Is that? Yeah. Say it. Yeah, Sandrell Ross. Oh, yeah, we know Sandrell. All right, Sandrell, here she comes, everybody. She's been on this show before, very funny. Here she is. Um... I have frequent sex with a minor. <laughs> Reti, minority, okay? <laughs> it's my husband. <laughs> He's black. <laughs> He's really black. Um, I, but I love my tall glass of Coca-Cola, <laughs> you know? Because he can't be a tall glass of water because he's black. <laughs> but I'm thirsty, though. Uh, <laughs> Yes, I love him. I love him. I'm going to rape him tonight. Uh, <laughs> Why he sleep, okay? It's okay because, you know, he gets hard. Uh, morning wood is actually night wood, okay? So I look at that like, you think I'm going to waste this? <laughs> no. One of us is awake. One of us is awake. It's going down or up. Up and down, up and down, up and down. I sang him lullabies so he can go to sleep. <laughs> All right, y'all. That's my time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh. Sandrell Ross. 
Welcome back, Sandro. Hey, Tony. We've had you on before. You had a great set. You said your boyfriend did comedy. We had him on. He had a great set. He yeah. did the Thursday show. Uh-huh. You did the Thursday show. Right. And uh, and out of all that, then he ended up uh, opening up for uh, Joe Rogan at one point out of all that, right? Yeah, he did. Incredible. And uh, how long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, consistently or un- inconsistently, eight years. I've been an entertainer for 12 what, have you, what were the first four years? Huh? What, what kind of... <laughs> what, what, Poetry and acting. <laughs> oh, okay. What, you thought All I right. was a stripper? Oh, no. no, I had no maybe. idea. Did you say maybe? Huh? What? I'm talking to you, Tony. Coming to the stage, Aunt Jemima, everybody. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> hey, whatever makes the money. <laughs> Goddamn right. That's what I always say. I love it. So what do you do for work now? Uh, I'm doing this now full time. Stand-up comedian, full well, time. Yeah, Look I'm, at you, living yeah. the dream. Mm-hmm. I love it. I'm trying. How's it going for you? Not good. <laughs> <laughs> I spend most of my time stalking my husband, so. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Keeping an eye on him because he's yeah. also a comedian. Yeah. He's, a, he's ridic- a comedian. He, he, you guys are both very, very funny. Uh, do you guys ever like get into arguments about who's like funnier, like work stuff? Yeah, um, he got he got mad at me one time because he felt like I stole his joke book, but I didn't steal it. You know, it was laying around. So. Hell yeah! Right, finders keepers. The fuck? I love it. So you did some of his jokes. Well, it wasn't like, you know, I mean, I switched them so it can be right. like for me. <laughs> Not word for word is what I'm saying. It was like right. put together some words, you know, scramble. Yeah. It was like scramble, yeah. Yeah, you just mix it up. Mm-hmm. My girl, she's a short glass of Coca-Cola, something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, man. Okay. Yeah, this is joke. okay, so you're a full-time comedian. So is your man. What yeah. do you guys do for fun? Um, fuck. Um... <laughs> How, do you, how long have you two been together? Uh, we've been together, shoot, how, how long have we been? Uh, he's here. Uh, 10 years? I, no, 10 no tw- years. 11. 11 years. How do you keep things interesting? Seems like you're very sexually active still. How do you guys keep things interesting in the bedroom? Um, I beatbox. Oh, uh, Lord knows that'll do it. He, uh, he flows. Yeah. So. We make music together, you know? I love it. I love it. Can you really beatbox a little bit? Yeah. Can you yeah. beatbox for us right now? Sure. Impressive. That's impressive. Much cooler than the, much cooler than the New Zealand guys fly me to the moon. You know what I mean? That's a requirement for black school. When I went from a private school to a black school, mm-hmm. I had to learn how to beatbox to continue yeah. going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I had to. It's a requirement. Where you get yeah. to come from black to white. <laughs> Wait, yeah. what did that white lady just say? She said you had to throw that private school in there, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Oh, my God. Oh, it's the lady from Florida. It's okay. All right. All right. Oh, her feet still wet from the hurricane. I was embarrassed for a second. Just turns out a lady's visiting from Orlando, everybody. I love it. Sandrell. Very, very interesting. So you guys are sexually active. What else? What else do you guys do for fun? How do you you keep your... You just recently moved to Austin from what? Detroit? (laughs) No. no. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Now I'm the lady from Orlando. <laughs> Hell no. You guys just uh, moved here from somewhere. No, no. we, we were, uh, it's, it was crazy. Um, we, we were in Chicago, and then we moved to New York. And right after we moved to New York, like we were getting momentum, yep. fucking pandemic, and we came back to Texas. Gotcha. Yeah, so that's gotcha. the story. All right, that makes sense. It was yeah. Chicago uh-huh. that I had in my head that I got confused with Detroit. With Detroit, yeah. They, it's kind of close. Easy, totally. C&D, all right. Great Lakes. Yeah. <laughs> They're all right there, right on the Great 
flakes. Yeah. All right. So uh, now you live here. What do you guys love about Austin? Um, Austin's really beautiful. I didn't know it was so beautiful. It's really beautiful. It's crazy. Okay, yep. you can clap for that. I didn't... Big lakes, big yeah. rivers. Yeah. You know, um, we're actually from Houston. Right. So we were raised in Houston. H-Town. Yeah. What's that? Oh, shit. Sipping on some I was waiting. syrup I was waiting. is what Red Band has loaded up right now. Seep, seep, no, seep, seep. <laughs> very, very good Red Band. But yeah, so I'm Oh, I get it because awesome. I said Aunt Jemima. That's actually pretty funny. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Thought it was a syrup reference. No, it's there. a Houston reference it's because a, you sip on syrup and you listen to chopped and screwed music because yeah. it's real slow. There you go. You know it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. All right. Damn. <laughs> wow. You feel like I just went to a black private She should tell you some her. Houston... <laughs> She should tell you some Houston slang, like slabs, boppers. You know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Give us some more. What else is Houston slang? Houston slang? I mean, is it the words? What? Oh, my Pop God. Trunks, Look at this crunk. fucking capital yep. rioter Spin speaking up. up. This fucking yeah, sunburnt you know. caveman over here. Hey, oh, my out. God. Holy hey, shit. Hey. You're from Houston? Hey, no. Oh, my. I don't even know he what you're saying it. right now. Oh my God! What saloon do you drink at, sir? Jesus Christ! Sandrell, absolutely so entertaining. Um, thank you so. I would much. love to have you on the Secret Show Thursday if you want to. Whoa! Come. You booked it. You know what though? I feel like I feel like we should put a little ribbon on this thing the same way we did it last time. Why don't you bring up your man and have him do a minute and then we'll all get out of here together. Why don't you introduce him? It's only right. You guys have been together 11 years. Yeah. All right. Everybody, this guy, next guy coming up, he is so fucking fine, by the way. He's my tall glass of Coca-Cola. Give it up for the funny Mickey Housley! <laughs> Notice how the music changed. Um... <laughs> Started playing real black songs. Cool. Let me ask y'all this. Uh, <laughs> as a group, do y'all feel like domestic violence is wrong? <laughs> yeah, okay, never mind. I, uh, <laughs> I feel, I, I don't believe in domestic violence. I do believe in domestic disputes. I feel like you can learn a lot about yourself with domestic disputes. Like, fellas, you ever try to body slam your girl? <laughs> and it didn't go as easy as you thought it would. <laughs> Some are like, yes. <laughs> like, you know, you need to shut the fuck up. You're going down like, oh, you've been working out, damn. I found out that I need to like gain weight cause like I've, I've been skinny all my life, right? Like some of y'all are looking at me in the microphone saying like, which one's telling the jokes? It's me. <laughs> cause when you're my size, there's certain clothes you can't wear like muscle shirts, right? Cause you gotta have muscles to wear muscle shirts. And two, I get tired of pulling up the sleeve like it's a bra strap, like this right here. Uh. Damn it. <laughs> I'm Mickey House. I thank y'all. Wow. Mickey Hauser. What up, Tony? Back on the show. Unbelievable. Yeah. Always absolutely fucking hilarious. Thank A you, true, bro. real, professional comedian. Thank you, Absolutely man. incredible. Always killing. How's life going? Life is cool, man. Uh, yeah, fucking, as she said, uh... <laughs> And she's the aggressive, you know what I'm saying? Like, most marriages is like, man, my wife ain't giving me pussy, but she's, I'm the one holding out, because she... <laughs> she wants to get a baby, you know, because it's like, like, men, we can have babies, like, for a long time, a woman, like, the clock is ticking, so she's That's trying true. to... That's true. Yeah. And we know your type of people like to show up late, you know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> 
<laughs> Never on time. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. What else has been going on, Mickey? Anything else? Yeah, man. We just been uh, traveling, man, and, yep. and all that cool stuff. Uh, just living life, man. And yeah, just regular, I same old. I love it. Yeah. You're a cold blooded assassin. Thank you, man. Love to have you on The Secret Show also Thursday. Yeah, no you, doubt man. about it. You guys deserve it. Real comedy spots. Out here doing it for a living. Make some noise for my friends, Mickey Hauser and Sandrell Ross, everybody. We did it again. The drawing from Ryan J. Ebelt is in, and it is truly fucking unfucking believable It's absolutely incredible. Check it out at RyanJEbelt.com. And uh, we also have local artists. The great Chris Rogers was drawing the entire time live. Started with a clean slate. And during tonight's episode, he was able to come up with this painting. Wow, look at that. The great David Lucas. I do believe that's going to be for sale immediately following tonight's show. So whoever's the highest bidder gets a shot at that. Um, guys, how loud can this place get for my fantastic guests? David Lucas, William Montgomery, and the great Hans Kim. The boys are working. They're doing it. All you have, uh, your names are your websites, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. DavidLucasComedy.com. I'll be in Winnipeg in November. I'll let your boy. That's right. Hans Kim, you have some tour dates coming up? DJ Hans Kim, I'll be at the Improvs in California. Come check me out. When's that? November. Very good. And William Montgomery traveling with me all around the country. And and find me on Cameo. Yes. William Montgomery is killing it on Cameo. Find me on Cameo. Get his cameos. They're absolutely hilarious. Get your Kill Tony fan in your life a great birthday or Christmas present or whatever the hell you want to celebrate or... Just do it to make your uh, loved one laugh. Why not have a personalized message from William Montgomery? He's making vast sums of money on Cameo right now. Don't say that. Don't no, say I'm that, kidding. People. He's struggling. He really needs your Cameo money. He's, he can barely make rent. How loud can this place get for the Kill Tony Band? Brought to you by Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey. That's the great Michael Gonzalez on the drums. Dave Shear on guitar. Max Frost on the electric guitar. The great Paul Deemer on the horns. And how about one more time as loud as we can get it for the great D Madness on the bass, huh? Thank you to the amazing staff here at Vulcan and the great team that we work with all the time. We absolutely love them. Shout out to the Red Rose, the Yellow Rose, D Betty Vodka. And the Hotel Van Zandt, where now you can use the promo code Kill Tony, save 30% on a Sunday or a Monday night. The official Kill Tony after party starts right now. Live music coming at you in just a few minutes. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Love we you love guys. You every single week. We'll do it again soon.